All righty, good afternoon. Uh, good to see everybody. I appreciate you coming out on short notice. And first off, I want to apologize. Uh, Lindsay, it's been an emotional day here, uh, no doubt about that. And she's having some conversations with her staff and is tied up in those conversations. I know a lot of you are down at the Target Center and we brought you here. So she'll be uh, available to the media at a later date. So you're just going to have an opportunity to hear from me today. So if you have any uh, questions, I'm happy to take those questions. When did these conversations start about replacing Coach Whaler? Well, we, uh, you know, Lindsay, obviously, when we hired her five years ago, uh, you know, we have a very close relationship. And uh, last year at the Final Four, uh, when she was being inducted in the Naismith Hall of Fame, uh, I was down in New Orleans uh, with uh, some of the meetings, and uh, we had a chance to visit down there. Uh, we visited throughout the season. I had a really good meeting a few weeks ago, uh, and then this morning, obviously, we met. And, uh, again, it's been a series of conversations I've had with Lindsay uh, probably over the past year. So did she step down, Mark, or did you fire her? Uh, she w mutually agreed to step down. Would you say the impetus came from you, or was this more of a personal decision for her? Uh, Jim, I think it would be a combination of both. I, I mean, again, I think when, when we talked last year in New Orleans um, at the Final Four, you know, she talked about – uh, the struggles, we had a lot of kids leave the program last year, and she just talked about some of the struggles. Uh, super excited about our freshman class that came in and had such a, a positive impact on our program. And as we kind of had those conversations, uh, I think, again, we felt like it was in the best interest for our program uh, and for her as a person uh, that she stepped down. Mark, did you not have any – I mean, she does have this good freshman class, um, and she's got some kids come in. Did you – was that not an issue for you? Did you not maybe not want to see what happens at least next year? You know, again, the conversations that we've had, you know, we just talked about uh, college athletics is upside down right now. I mean, you all know what's going on in college athletics with the transfer portal, NIL, uh, everything that's going on in college athletics and the conversations that she and I had, uh, she was uh, and is super excited about this freshman class that's here. She's excited about the recruits coming in here. And again, uh, together, we just felt like now is the right time for her to step down. She's still going to be a part of our program, as we talked about in the release. Uh, she is so much uh, loved in these hallways and these buildings. Obviously, she's an icon. She's on Mount Rushmore in the state of Minnesota. But again, we just felt like now is the right time. Just, just so I'm understanding this, because you're being a little vague here. Um, were you the person that said, I think it's time to step down, and she said, and she agreed to it? Is that what happened? Pat, again, I, I go back to our conversation in New Orleans and, and the conversation we had there and some of the struggles she was going through and then our conversations throughout the year. And then I said, and Pat, I may be off on my dates, maybe two, three, four weeks ago, she and I sat down and, and had a long conversation. And, uh, and again, in those conversations, we just felt like now was the right time. So is it safe to say entering this season, she knew it was a make or break year for her? Uh, I, I think... Uh, I think all of our coaches understand that we want to compete. You know, when, when I evaluate a program, and again, if you talk to any one of our coaches, we, we talk about four or five things uh, when we evaluate a program. We talk about from a compliance standpoint. You've all heard me say doing it right in Minnesota matters. Uh, we talk about academics and how our program is doing academically. Uh, we talk about the student-athlete experience and, and what's that experience like for our student-athletes. And we talk about the, um, the PR, the fundraising, and, and how we're doing on that side of it. And we talk about winning. And obviously, at this level, winning is a big part of that. But so are the other elements. And again, uh, we just felt when she and I had those conversations, and Pat, I don't mean to be vague, we, we've had very open and honest conversations, and we just felt like now was the right time. In this day and age of uh, the transfer portal, you realize that starting over with a new coach might also mean starting over again with a vastly turned over roster. I do realize that transfer coming in who probably isn't too happy she won't be able to play for the coach that she's committed to and so I mean you got, you're you prepared now so in many ways this could be a start from scratch situation. I understand that. Did you, Mark you when you hired Lindsay she'd never been a coach did you did you feel like you gave her enough leeway did you is there something you didn't necessarily see between year one and year five? No John you know again um 
you know, I've known Liz since she was a student athlete here. Again, I was the director of marketing. You know, when she was playing here, I'm throwing T-shirts in the crowd when she hits the three-pointers, that type of stuff. I've known her a long time. And, and obviously, when we hired her, we knew she did not have coaching experience. And if you remember when we hired her, you know, I, I talked to a Cheryl, have a lot of respect for her, obviously. I talked to Gino, a ton of respect for him. And, and Lindsay and I had lots of conversations and, and about the staff she put together. If you remember her first staff, she had some more experienced assistant coaches and people like that. And, and again, Again, um, if you go back to five years and look at what's happened in college athletics over that period, and oh, by the way, we had a pandemic. I mean, there's been a lot of things that's been thrown at all of our coaches, not just Lindsay, but all of our coaches. And again, uh, I was very pleased with how she ran our program. Um, if you could see um, uh, the student athletes now and how much they care for her, how much her staff cares for her, how much she cares for them. I mean, it's a really special group of people. When you say all that, why not give her a six year? Yeah. Again, she and I have had multiple conversations, and we both agree that this was the right time. Mark, what message does this send to that freshman class that she has this year that played pretty well and has a bright future? What does this say to them about their future here if you said that you guys are prepared to start over and start from scratch? I, I didn't say we're prepared to start over. You asked me questions about if I'm aware of the transfer portal and how that works, and I understand how the transfer portal works. Uh, obviously, our freshman class is a special group of people, and I had a chance to meet with our student athletes uh, after Lindsay visited with them this afternoon, and, and we talked about the importance of them, what they mean to our program, and, and, and how we continue to build this program forward. So um, I don't think we're starting over. I don't think that at all, and if I implied that, I, I didn't mean to. I, I was answering your questions about if I understand how the transfer portal works. I, I don't think we're starting over. I think we have a really great core group of people here who have made progress throughout this past year, and it's our job to go out and find a coach that can continue to build upon the success. We've seen, we've seen basketball programs change their fortunes pretty quickly, whether through the portal or whatever. Why have both your programs struggled to be a consistent winner? <laughs> You know, Chip, and, and Paul might smile, you know, it, it's, um, how many times do I ask you that question? We got to figure it out. I mean, we, we at Minnesota, I, I went back and I looked at the, um, you know, I think in the last 25, 30 years, and I may be off, you know, our winning percentage is, is maybe 40%, under 40% on the men's side, maybe just above 40% on the women's side in Big Ten play. And, you know, we have Athletes Village. We're so grateful for the support we get from President Gable from our border regents. We have everything in place, and I've been fortunate. I mean, when I was at Syracuse, our women's team went to the Final Four. When I was at Syracuse, our men's team went to the Final Four. When I was at Kentucky, our men's team went to the Final Four. At Kentucky, our women's basketball team had great success. At Boise State, both our men's and women's basketball team went to the NCAA tournament. Um, there is no reason why it cannot be done here, and that's the question we've got to figure out. You find the right coaches. To do that now. There's pressure every day. I mean, yeah, we want to find the right people. There's no doubt. If Lindsay would have said, hey, I really think I'm really close to getting this thing figured out, and that's kind of what she said in the paper, I guess, the other day, would she have been back next year? If she said, you know, Mark, I, I don't see it that way. I think I got one year left, you know, whatever. Could she have made a case and you brought her back? Again, Mike, with the conversations that she and I have had the past year, and again, you're going to hear me say New Orleans, and you're going to hear me say about three, four weeks ago, the conversations we have had, we both felt that now was the right time. It's hard because Lindsay's not here, but what it sounds like between the lines is you're telling us that basketball is not the way it was when Lindsay went to school here, and she's not sure she likes it. No, I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the last five years it's completely changed, and I think, yeah, yeah, I think the last, yeah. But yeah. the state of the game, is that, does that does ring true at all? Or? No, I, I, I'm not sure. John, I'm following your question. I mean, well, it, yeah. Out. Is what, like, that she's like willing, you know, you, keep, you mentioned it's changed with the portal, the pandemic. It, it sounds like maybe she was just like, yeah, I, I really don't want to do this anymore. I think there's a lot of factors, and I don't want to speak for Lindsay. I think when, and again, she'll have an opportunity to visit with all of you. I don't want to speak for her, but I think you need to ask those questions, sir. To that, to that point, sorry. That's right. You, I really apologize. Up until five minutes before we started, there were two microphones and two chairs, so there was an intention that, that Lindsay Whalen be here. Are you saying that five minutes before we started, she said, I'm not coming, and, and was it an emotional decision, or was there a miscommunication? Uh, miscommunication on my part. Uh, we had talked about it. She's still having conversations with her staff, and I want to be very respectful of those conversations. As I said, it's been an emotional day for a lot of people, and I want to make sure she had a chance to have those conversations. Was the decision made, the final decision, was that made this morning? Was that made last night? When was the final decision made? Uh, she and I had a chance to visit this morning. Mark, you 
say winning is important. Is it safe to say that you're evaluating the men's program as well as Coach Johnson's job security? Say. Uh, obviously, Ben's in year two, and, and it's my job as the athletic director to evaluate all 22 programs. Uh, and, and again, when we look at those programs, we look at those five uh, pillars, if you will, and, and Ben's aware of those five pillars. And again, it's my job, uh, you know, back to Chip's question, how do we get our basketball programs to compete at a high level? Mark, how disappointing is it that you're to this point? I know you said it COVID, the landscape of college sports, but I remember the celebration five years ago at the bar, and it was a big party when Lindsay was introduced. So think about that moment to where we are now. How disappointing is it? Um, it, it uh, I don't know if disappointing is the right word, Doogie, but it's it's uh, there's been a lot of changes. And, and and again, you know, as the athletic director, uh, I want to make sure that we take care of our people, our staff, our student athletes, et cetera. And uh, and again, it's been a lot over the last five years for all of us. Mark, given the, the stats that you rattled off about the last lack of success the last. 25 years. How desirable do you think this job is to your, your prospect pool? Uh, based on my phone, we're getting lots of calls. I mean, it, it's uh, again, we've got a great core freshman group of student athletes. Uh, we've got a great team, uh, great chemistry in that locker room. Uh, that's a credit to Lindsay and the hard work she's done. Uh, and so, again, our intention is to go out and get a great coach that can help lead this program. Because, again, there is no reason why it cannot be done at Minnesota. No reason at all. I'm sorry, Mark. Do you want to hire someone with, with, with head coaching experience, or are you willing to go with somebody who doesn't have any head coaching experience? Uh, I, I, want to, I want to hire somebody that fits our culture. And, and, and what I mean by that is we, we, we talk all the time about, again, doing it right in Minnesota matters. I, I want somebody who understands and will do things the right way compliance-wise, with recruiting, Again, NIL, all the stuff that's going on out. You guys read it. You write about it. We want somebody who's going to do it the right way, uh, but most importantly, provide a first-class experience to our student-athletes. Given, given that you were uh, having ongoing conversations with Lindsay and you were watching the season go and you had to know that this was a potential end to this situation, have you done due diligence and come up with at least something of a short list of people you want to at least inquire about as we go forward? It, it, you know, do you have a, a list of names? At the ready? We, we try to be prepared, yes. So, so we try to be prepared. You've got the file in the drawer, right? We, we try to be prepared, yeah. Mark, how much is the NIL when you, when you go out now and, and you start hiring coaches? And how much do they want to know about NIL money that is going to be attractive to players coming in? Uh, it's an important part uh, of our program. And, and obviously, we're grateful for Dinkytown athletes in our collective that we have working with them. Uh, but, but, Mike, uh, I spend almost every day talking about NIL with coaches, with students, reading about it, trying to learn about it, trying to understand the guardrails. Uh, but there's no doubt NIL, it's, it's a changing landscape right now. And, and when you see programs that are landing transfers, NIL, NIL is a part of that. Uh, and, again, I, I have great uh, uh, appreciation for Jeremiah Carter, who heads up our compliance department, who's heavily involved with our NIL to make sure we stay within the guardrails and we do it the right way. I think we do do it the right way, but NIL is a big part of what we do as we move forward. And coaches or professional coaches, want, do they want to know a lot about that because it obviously affects the recruiting? Uh, yeah, there's no doubt coaches want to talk about NIL. Are you in an adequate spot relative to your competition? Uh, Chip, uh, great question. I, I, I would say, um, uh, and again, I, I give Jeremiah Carter a lot of credit. You know, Jeremiah, uh, for the past year, has worked with our Office of General Counsel, with our campus uh, on NIL and what it's going to be at Minnesota, uh, working with the people at Dingytown Athletes. They have signed a lot of our student athletes, um, and I feel like we are co very competitive with our peers. Um, I think a lot of what you read about NIL, some of these dollar figures, are not accurate when I talk to other ADs and, and hear that they're, you know, they signed Jim to this and they signed Pat to that and, and you find out what they actually is going on. They're much different than what's reported at times. But I do feel like we have a competitive NIL, but there's no doubt we have to continue to be aggressive in that space because that's a part of our reality. Mark, was the uh, Penn State game a trigger or a deciding factor in any way or would this have happened regardless of how yesterday's game went on? Uh, regardless, uh, Jim, you know, again, she and I met again three, four weeks ago, and, and when we had that conversation, it was a really good conversation. And, uh, you know, again, you guys all know Lindsay. I mean, she's open, she's transparent, she is who she is. And, and when we had those open conversations, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, yesterday it's a game. Uh, we made that great 20 to 5 run to, to tie it at the end there and, and, and almost had a chance to come back and get that game. Uh, but, you know, talked to her after the Purdue game, and we were excited, jumping up and down, a great win this past Sunday in the barn. So, 
again, this decision, uh, you know, again, that game didn't have an impact on it. Take one or two more. Hey, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. I think there's only been a female as the head coach in program history. Are you open to hiring a male? I'm, I'm not sure if there's ever been a. No, there hasn't. That's correct. Yeah. Well, well again, we, we want to find what I, the best, the best candidate for Minnesota. So we'll, we'll do a national search on that. Speaking of Minnesota, speaking of, for myself, I've been here 20 years, and I learned where this building was because of Lindsey Whalen because of what she did that year that she took the team to the Final Four. So did her legacy, her history, weigh on you or her at any point that this was going to be a difficult one to manage in terms of whether she resigned or was fired? Just talk about how important it was to take a chance on someone like Lindsey Whalen and what it means now to have to part ways with Lindsey Whalen. Okay, well, if you, um, if you allow me to tell a story, so just like you, uh, when I was here as the marketing director, uh, her coach left after year one. And I remember there was a press conference and all the media is there following all the players, all the student athletes, how they're going to respond. And Lindsay came out and all of you threw a microphone in front of her face. And I remember how she responded to those questions. And then you saw what she did the next three years as a student athlete, taking us to the Final Four, the great success, and all those type of things. And, and again, uh, when I left and I'm gone from Minnesota for 11 years, I followed her. You know, when she's with the Connecticut Sun, she's doing her, you know, the links, all that. I, you know, I followed her and kept in contact. And if you remember when I came back as AD, uh, one of the first lunches I had was with Lindsey Whalen. You know, and so um, a lot of people know Minnesota basketball because of Lindsey Whalen. I mean, she is a icon. You know, she is Mount Rushmore Minnesota athletics. I mean, we get that of the of the state of Minnesota and those type of things. And and is there um, any doubt that that history, that background, weighs on all of our decisions every day, uh, every day? But when I talk to the team today, when I answer your question again, you know, think of Lindsay as a person and what we've all been through, um, and and the challenges, all those type of things. Uh, it's been a lot for everybody. But, yes, we were aware of that, and, and it's something that does weigh on your decision when you make these decisions. And when I talk about an emotional day, and, and I know you're disappointed that she's not here, but I want to be very respectful for her to have those conversations that she needs to have because that's who she is. And, again, she'll have a chance to, to talk to all of you, when, when, you know, at another date. One point that I'm getting at is that how much Minnesota wanted this to work. Not just the University of Minnesota, but Minnesota wanted this to work. <laughs> Would you agree with that being true, that that was the sentiment? Oh, no doubt, yeah. I mean, if you go back to when we hired her and, and the response we got, and uh, I mean, I, I remember going back the day we hired her and P.J. Fleck is picking me up, jumping up and down. He was so excited, right? That yeah, that does. But, but, you know, he was, so my point is the entire state embraced it. And again, she is Minnesota, and, and we owe so much to her, and, and none of that's changed. I mean, and as she said in, in the release, I mean, when we talked this morning, she, she's a proud alumna. She wants to see the best for Minnesota basketball. She's still going to be very visible in our program. She's going to be around our program. And, and again, we look forward to working with her as we move forward. This new role that she's going to have with the program, is this something that she wanted, that she brought to you and said, hey, let me stick around? Or did you present this to her when you told her, like, we don't want you as a coach anymore? Uh, <clears throat> my exact words to her were, selfishly, it would be awesome if you could st still be a part of our program and around our program. And uh, to Mike's question, we talked about NIL, fundraising, uh, helping us in those areas, and, and she was very excited about that. And, and she talked about how, Mark, there's nothing more than I want to see this program continue to grow and have great success. So we talked to her. So again, I, I want to be very clear. I said, selfishly, we would love to have you to continue to be a part of our program. And she was all about that because she cares so much about this place, about the state of Minnesota. And, and you know, again, we joked this morning when we were talking. I mean, um, our women's hockey team gets a win. One of the first text messages I get is from Lindsey Whalen. The Vikings get a win. One of the first text messages I get is from Lindsey Whalen. The Twins trade somebody. One of the first text messages I get is from, I mean, she is Minnesota, and she loves this place. She loves the state, the sports, all that type of stuff. So, again, we, we're ecstatic that she'll continue to be a part of our program, and she can help us with fundraising. To Mike's question, to NIL, to Chip's question, how do we continue to be competitive in NIL space, that's where we'll continue to work closely with Lindsay as we move forward. All right. Thank you all. Everyone. Thank you.